You may be thinking that during this time of the coronavirus, it's kind of strange to give a homily on happiness. But the first point of my homily focuses precisely on that. And it actually comes from the readings that we have at Mass, but above all the prayers. When Father Carlos said the opening prayer just a few moments ago, we are asking God to grant us full and lasting happiness. And then in a few moments from now, when he says the offertory prayer, he'll be asking God to give us the prize of everlasting happiness. So I thought counterintuitively, this would be kind of a good theme to address, the importance of happiness. And obviously, we know all of the great philosophers over time, starting with Aristotle, spoke about the fact that all people desire to be happy, and we know that's true. If you look at the question that's up here right now, does anyone know where that comes from? Any of our older parishioners? Ah, very good, the Baltimore Catechism. If you're a certain age bracket, you would remember that. If not, you wouldn't. So one of the early questions is, why? did God make you, right? And we know God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him forever in heaven. So God wants us to be happy. We ourselves, if we look into our hearts, look into our experience, we want to be happy. And kind of we all want that fairy tale book ending that they lived happily ever after. It's something that's deeply ingrained in each and every human being. And it's important to really think about that. That's what we're destined for, full and everlasting happiness. But great, now how do I obtain this happiness? And that's really the second point of my homily, happiness and industriousness. Today's first reading presents this wonderful woman, this ideal woman of Proverbs 31. She's an amazing multitasking woman from like 3,000 years ago. She takes care of her husband, her kids, her house. She even makes money on the side. She helps take care of the poor. I mean, she's just this amazing ideal person. Industrious, 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 always working for the good of others. And then obviously in the Gospels, the master says to the servants who were industrious, who made more, he rewards them. He says, enter into my happiness, enter into my joy. So it's something that we know is a core part of our lives, is that we have to kind of, as well, with God's grace, earn our salvation, right? We have to work out our salvation. And you know, if every year I try to go for my silent retreat, I try to go to a Benedictine monastery. I don't know if it will be possible this year. But anytime you go to a Benedictine monastery, you'll see the words at the front gate, ora et labora. And those words of St. Benedict mean pray and work. So we are called to pray to say, God, help me to find this happiness both here on earth but more importantly in heaven, and Lord, let me work with you, let me work with the graces you're giving me to obtain that happiness. But both are necessary, both prayer and work. So obviously we could talk a lot about that distinction between happiness here on earth and the real happiness in heaven, because we all know that happiness on earth, it's fleeting, Good days, bad days, twists and turns, ups and downs, deaths and births, and all these other things. So is that what Jesus is talking about? Is that the happiness he's discussing? And ultimately the answer is no. What he's talking about is that everlasting happiness, what we call the joys of heaven. And next week, Father Carlos is going to be preaching on the next part of this gospel, Matthew 25, where Jesus teaches even clearer that at the end of our lives, there's either heaven or there's hell. And you don't often hear homilies about hell, and this is not going to be some type of hellfire and brimstone type of homily. But a friend sent me an email recently that I wanted to share with you, and, and this is the summary of it, what I thought was so profound, so insightful. 
Hell is not for people whom the Lord has rejected, but for people who have rejected the Lord. Our Lord will never reject anyone. Our Lord will accept everyone. Our Lord desires the salvation of each and every human being. He wants us all to be saved. He will not reject us. But we, in our free will, we can make the choice to accept or reject. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us not reject the Lord. On the contrary, let us fully accept the Lord and let us accept his commandment. And his commandment is clear. His commandment is to love to love God, to love our neighbor, to love our enemy, to love without counting the cost. This is the commandment that God has given us. Let us fully, fully accept and not hold back any part of our acceptance of our Lord's command. And there's a great mystic, this Saint John of the Cross, great Carmelite saint back in the end of the Middle Ages, where he spoke about, in the twilight of our lives, will be examined on how we have loved. That the earthly successes, the possessions we've garnered over our lives, they matter nothing. What really matters at the end of our lives will be examined on how we have loved. And you know, about 20 years ago when I was a young priest I was beginning obviously my priestly ministry but I was also beginning my academic uh, internship so to speak my first teaching at the college level and I remember being so excited about it and I was a very fair professor pretty demanding as well but I made it clear to all of my students at the beginning of the course if you do the readings if you take notes when I give lectures in class you should do very well on the final exam. But the week before the final exam, it was so fun. I had the exam all printed out. I had all the copies with me. And as I was leaving, I said to them, I said, listen, next week, this is what you have. Let me the final exam. When class is over, if any of you want to buy it, I'm selling it for $100 each. Obviously, I was joking, but I remember seeing some of the students kind of like reaching for their wallet, right? Who wouldn't want to have the final exam for a course that you want to get an A on? Or I remember as a teenager when the SATs were everything, and dependent upon your score at the SAT, it depended whether you're going to this college or that college. Your whole career, your whole life seemed to focus on this one three-hour test on a Saturday morning what we wouldn't have paid to get a copy of that SAT the week before, the month before. I would have paid hundreds of dollars for it. Who wouldn't want to ace something so important? And you know what, brothers and sisters? You don't have to pay for it. Our Lord is already telling us this is the final exam. This is what we're all going to be quizzed on, tested on at the end. How have we loved? And I want to get to the final third point of my homily with the word talents. You heard in today's gospel, this is known as the parable of the talents. And many times in our English language, we think of talents like, for example, Father Carlos has a wonderful talent for cooking. Cheryl has a wonderful talent for singing. Right? We all have our different talents. That is not what talents are in the Bible. Talent is actually a sum of money, a large sum of money. A talent was equal to 6,000 denarii. One denarius was one worker's wage for one day. So 6,000 denarii it's basically the equivalent to 20 years wages. 20 years wages. So if you take the medium income of an American today of being like $50,000, you're talking the person who got one talent 
If Jesus were telling this story today, he would say he gave to the first one one million dollars, to the second two million dollars, to the third five million dollars, right? Jesus is talking in exaggerated hyperbolic terms in this parable, right? But today when you leave church, God's not going to give any one of us a million dollars But if we live until next Sunday, God will give each and every one of us 10,000 minutes. Do the math, 24 times 60 times 7. 10,000 minutes each and every one of us will have. Will we bury most of those 10,000 minutes? Or will we be industrious? Will we use them to bring happiness to God and to those around us?